And today, y'all, we're actually going to be doing a how-to video, which is highly requested by y'all, to do the early Varangian guard. Now, as you can see, I am in my full attire equipment. Now, the early Varangian guard were pretty much, well, as uh, follows. They were pretty much well dressed, mostly like the Kievan Rus regions. However, that's because that's where they were framed from. In fact, the original uh, Ranjin Guard actually emerged from, well, none other than Vladimir the Great's own kingdom of the Kingdom of Roots. And the fact is, there is the old story about him actually, uh, well, giving at least over two to three thousand style of warriors from the far north of the Kievan Rus lands to a great Basil II. All he needed was, well, to give up his uh, sister's hand in marriage to well, none other than the entire Vladimir the Great. Now, it's actually stated that these kind of warriors were, well, dressed like this. I am wearing a Kievan Rus style helm, and now I even upgraded it to a full aventail, which means I covered my entire face. Uh, but as well, one major thing we have to understand is the Kievan Rus would have actually started to adopt certain arms and equipment from the said uh, people of Byzantium, mainly because they actually uh, had uh, close ties with them, such as Laminar. As well, they would have also used certain other weapons than the style weapons that we understand. In fact, the Kievan Rus were actually a mix of Slavic and Norse, majorly because of the fact of the people of Sweden that actually later integrated into the said lands of the Kievan Rus kingdoms. So yeah, now, one major thing about these guys, these guys were ferocious, hardcore badasses. In fact, the Varangian Guard were the elite bodyguard of Basil II. In fact, when Basil II actually had them in his service, the reason was, when it first started, was because one major reason. His kingdom was in civil war, and rather than rely on his own personal bodyguard to protect him, like previous emperors had, and they ended up dying because of him, Basil II hired mercenaries, and these mercenaries became the elite royal guard. One major thing I also have to point out here is, they were paid handsomely well, so much so that they became extremely rich in like one year alone. And with each battle that they went to, they were the first to actually get to the spoils, meaning they were the first to uh, choose from the spoils of war. They would have used a variety of weapons. Their entire armor wasn't fully uh, the same, and the fact is, even their helmets weren't the same. Sometimes they would use this Slavic style helm. They would also use the iconical nasal guard helm, as well also the optical helm. But I decided to go with this one because one, it's kind of screamed to me for this. And this is kind of an honor for the people of Ukraine right now, what they're going through. So yeah, right now we're in the summer heat and it's about a hundred and something degrees. Uh, or 90 something degrees, so yeah, a slight bit of a cool breeze, so that's a good thing. But yeah, so we're going to see how well I do in this armor. I want to put this out here though, when it came down to these guys, the fact is, since they were paid so handsomely well, they were incredibly so loyal to the Emperor that they would die for him and to be the last ones to ever leave the battle if it was disastrous, or the fact is, these guys would fight to the bitter end. And the fact is, since the fact of the, well, you know, one thing about Vikings, they are ferocity on the warfare design, these guys were also extremely dangerous for one major reason. The Northmen had that ferocity in battle. And now, also mixed in with it, could also be the infamous uh, style of which they, well, the Roman military was known for, order and discipline. With that mixed in, these guys were the shock force military. Now, I brought a variety of weapons such as maces, one-handed axes, spears, as well as javelins, my Dane axe, my sword, my CX, my shield, and as well, my kite shield. Why a kite shield? Simple. The ranging guard were given a vast amounts of arms and armor. And the fact is, they uh, even had something called the Varangian bra, uh, leather bra or whatever, which is this weird thing, uh, thing is, I don't think that will be a good comfortable fit for the fact I'm wearing uh, mail underneath this, so yeah, that might actually hurt a little. Uh, but yeah. So many of you might wonder though, but Templar, how ferocious were these guys? 
Let's just say you do not want to face these guys in the middle of the battlefield. And to the major point that these guys were the elite bodyguard for so long, from 988 to the fall of the Byzantine Empire. So, technically, these guys were actually ferociously loyal to their emperor as long as they were paid. In fact, the Dane Axe I'm holding here, that was found in Gotland, is actually stated to have been based off of the design of axe that was well imported to the said Scandinavian lands from the Kievan Rus, and as well from Byzantium. So in fact, Byzantium Guard would have used something near identical to this. Also, as you can tell, I only have one band brace on, while my other arm doesn't. Why is this? Simple. Because I am, ha am right-handed, so I just need a shield in my left hand, and I'm pretty much protected. However, some Varangian Guard did not use shields, I am told. If this is true or not, I don't know. But, as I said, they would have used an assortment of arms and armor. And the fact is, they weren't always from the north. They were even from the Saxons. After the disastrous slaughter at Hastings, many of them actually went to the lands of Byzantium as mercenaries and became the new Varangian Guard units. But I think I'll have to talk about them some other time. Because right now we're going to be doing the early Varangian Guard from 988 to 1066, and this axe is, well, as you can tell, pretty much, I feel extremely light, as well, I'm also wearing tall boots instead of my regular short boots, now, uh, what does that mean, reason means is, uh, my boots I'm wearing are not ankle length, they're about mid-thigh, I want to say, or shin length, I should say, uh, but yeah, there were different variations of how long they were. Sometimes they were up towards the knee, sometimes they were a little above the knee. There were different variations, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, guys, sit back and relax, and watch me sweat the lean hell out of myself.
sail to distant shores. Stand up high on the prow, noble bark I steer. Steady course to the haven, hew many foemen, hew many foemen. My mother told me someday I would buy galley with good oars, sail to distant shores, stand up high on the prow. Noble bark I steer, steady course to the haven, human foeman, human foeman. My mother told me someday I would buy galley with good oars, sail to distant shores, stand up high on the Proud, noble bark I steer, steady course to the 
to distant shores. Stand up high on the prow, noble bark I steer. Steady course to the haven, humanity foam and humanity foam. My mother told me someday I would buy galley with good oars, sail to distant shores, stand up high on the prow. Noble bark, I steer steady course to the haven. Human foemen, human foemen. My mother told me someday I would buy galley with good oars, sail to distant shores. Stand up high on the prow, noble bark I steer. Steady course to the haven, human foemen, human foemen, human foemen, human foemen. y'all like that. As y'all saw, I was sweating bollocks on myself. Literally, I am sweating balls right now. Because one, trying to dress in this stuff is not easy during the springtime, nor is it during the summertime. So just imagine how hot it would have been in the hot Mediterranean sun. Now, for what I'm told, though, is they would have not, uh, Kevin Ruth or the Varangian Guard would not actually stated to have worn male armor or male hauberks. Uh, some of them actually were stated to have just worn laminar with an extendo uh, shoulder guard. Meaning, I don't need to actually wear anything besides, uh, well, laminar. Which that actually could make some sense. No many people do ask though, but simple are, why would they uh, start looking like, uh, I, you, I hear people always say, but similar, I heard that they would also start to look near more identical to the Byzantine military. Well, yeah, but that would be sometime after the year of 1066. Uh, but by that point in time, the ar the helmet would have changed entirely. The helmet, as I said, is of the Kievan Rus design. Uh, but yeah, there were different variations of helmets, equipment, and such. The fact is, one major thing about them is they were always stated to have looked like ferocious devils on the battlefield. So the fact is, sometimes even their faces were fully covered. The only thing you saw were their eyes. And these guys were devils to the said Islamic forces. But as well, not just to Islamic forces, also developed Christians and a Byzantine military. But this is why the Byzantine emperor would rather prefer these guys as his backbone military force rather than relying on his said uh, well, regular military. Now many people would also say, but Templar, how come these guys were so ferocious? Simple. Their entire story about them is, these guys were destined to be the glorious battle warriors of history. But as well, one of my favorite uh, Varangian guards is none other than Harold Hadrada. Now if you all want to see a video, uh, documentary series about him, I will highly recommend taking a checking out the couple of links down below in the description. As well, if y'all want to see any more Ranging Guard videos, I will leave also to look down below in the description if any of y'all want to actually see uh, a little more in depth. Now, the kite shield I was using is not the Byzantine kite shield that they used in history, uh, which it was more decorative, but sadly I don't actually have that purpose of getting my hands on one. Now, it's actually stated though, the, Byzant the Varangian banner is stated to be look like a red dragon, I am told, which they would use in such ferocity on the battlefield. Uh, but one major thing I couldn't understand in history, though, is the fact that their shields were painted with a red background and a black crow, symbolizing that they are the elite bodyguard. Now, as I said, there are different variations of armor they would use, such as laminar, scale, mail, and all that. But as I said, I am the 
veteran. I've, I'm a year-long veteran in the said service of the Byzantium military. So, yeah. But anyways, guys, hopefully you like this video. Like and subscribe for more. If any of y'all have any ideas for another how-to video, let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to get right into them. But anyways, guys, hopefully that we can actually do another how-to video soon. But probably next time, it'll, especially if we do it in the summer, I'm going to have to wear a lot lighter armor and equipment. Because, one, it is getting hot out here. So, yeah. Texas heat is... It's literally... Uh, this, like, Mediterranean heat has nothing compared to Texas heat. But anyways, guys, hopefully see y'all in the next one. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.